artificial intelligence definitely will help that system to learn and help the smokers to get better help and the help will be more refined and more able to answer all of the possible questions or the combination of the questions that those people who are willing to quit smoking will be asking this artificial agent. I think because we cannot predicting all of the questions, all the circumstances, all of the possible interactions, because we are on the journey to get there. So all of the algorithms will get better, the more we will apply and we'll use them. But one thing that we can start using today, which is oftentimes neglected, but it's already available. All of the interactions with the computers can be designed and not only for the one-to-one -one interaction, like in this case with the artificial agent, but all of the design interface and all of the components and the features can be plugged in to expose other ways for encouraging people to reconsider what they think. So for example, I'm using and relying on social influence. Social influence tells we constantly change what we think and do based on others. So we are looking at the positive other examples. So if the person has the motivation to speak with the artificial agent, it's a great start as the video says. <laughs> and then while the interaction is happening, of course we miss some depth because of the algorithms are not that level. What we have, we have other users and their experience as they are using the same artificial agent. So we have the experiences of the multiple users and how they have used and how they have progressed with their conversations. And I'm specifically emphasizing that other users and the information how they have used and how they have possibly improved their journeys by using the system that could be reflected through multiple design implementations. So imagine if there is a person speaking with an artificial agent and at the same time, simultaneously, there are 250 other users or 1,537 users. So the interface can gradually shift the colors by emphasizing simultaneous users at the same time, which gives the perception, I'm not alone. There are so many other people and the people when they use the system more frequently, they would be quickly grasping. Not, And of course, we can also use the number. So there's a counter, it's a very, straightforward, logical way to present it. But I would always encourage do more unobtrusive, more like um, reflective ways. So one, and that's social facilitation. Facilitation says people are more likely to be influenced or getting the message across if they feel other people are doing the same thing at the same time. In the same way, there could be other reflections of the previous data that is accumulated in the system and in multiple ways projecting depending on what kind of user do we have. Of course, we will learn also from the behavioral patterns. So some users are more frequent fully coming back, some users are less frequently. And for those, we can tailor what are the similar other people who are willing to quit smoking using the system. And that data would be just imp included into the interaction richness. And this is what we can do already today. That's a very fundamentally rooted in our social fabric. This is how we evolved. And if that is integrated on top or nearby or to complement the one-on-one -on -one interaction, that would be just giving like this, you know, when the singer, the solo singer, is in the front of the stage and they have the choir <laughs> behind them. So what I'm doing, what I'm speaking about, I'm speaking about the choir that giving the nice sound and the delivery and kind of supportive uh, tones while people are having the one-on-one -on -one direct, uh, direct conversation with the artificial agent. And I have many examples of, of how that works. So from MIT time, also later when I really encourage a very basic tiny element to be included into that interaction which would say people of your age and gender who also would like to quit smoking currently have done such a progress over the last three weeks because they've been using the system three times a day 
just as an example, it gives the sense that very similar others in terms, in this case, age and gender, but also we can also find similar others in terms of interest in life, I don't know, business, <laughs> location, and they've been progressing with that pace. And not only just saying the raw data says, oh, the others do better. No, no, no. We also need to explain why they are doing better by comparing the individual use of the system or the behavioral patterns or retention or how many times you do that, comparing with that similar reference group that is excelling a little bit better than you because they are making a different choices with regards to this system over the last period of time. And then you definitely get the basic idea. If I would do similarly as the reference group, most likely I would achieve the same results as the reference group. And this is how the social influence in a very plain way is working. We are against our human nature. So the better we understand our human nature, the better we are equipped to do something. And as discussed, there can be physiological addiction to nicotine and then the rest is over here. It's the behavioral choices and the behavioral choices certainly are influenced by external factors like the, the media, like the friends, like the what you see. But still, the last thing that really makes the choice is here and this is this one thought and whether the person thinks i am a smoker or i'm not so just when i explain the transformation is as simple as that and i have other videos about that and i usually use these two very basic elements to explain and i think i already used it into this video with addiction to alcohol it's the same thing so here i'm a smoker here i'm not a smoker and as long as you walk i'm a smoker i'm a smoker then all the rest of the in incentives and uh, initiatives will fail. And you only do this one transformation. And here, I'm not a smoker. And game over for all of the sales <laughs> globally if, if people just do this one transformation. And what can help to people to do this is evidence about other people succeeding with their decision making and with their choice it's all about how people can get more empowered by seeing how many others actually did it or doing it and the examples about the smoking or tobacco ban in different countries around the world is a great example so if we even do more of a scientific studies to see the outcomes of these people that previously were smoking and now not smoking and there would be clear evidence that that was a behavioral choice that now is not possible because the environmental change and then people have no big problem and especially in the next phase if we do the another research study where after the ban is taken away and we see that people are not returning back and they have enjoyed the healthier physiological states it's very basic and as i said we are dealing with our human nature and human nature knows about us more than we know about the human nature one great thing is once people have these experiences after 48 hours and more the physiology all the instincts or the signals are speaking oh i love that state of body and mind when it doesn't have this addictive substance and it really penetrates all of the daily feelings and the sleep gets better and the performance gets better when i in early days at mit i was speaking about oh why don't we do a competition about who drinks enough water per day that would be quite easy at different organizations and companies where you have departments and then you have these coolers with the water and then there would be a tiny counters by counting how many liters per person per department. There could be people and, and usually when I speak about this, people say, well, but you always get there some few individuals that would say water is not tasty. Yes, that's the <laughs> that's the thought. Water is not tasty. But if there is this social cooperation in your department and you don't want your department to be lower than the other departments, then you kind of, okay, I will cooperate with you. I will drink two liters of water per day. 
And what happens once you start doing it, your bias signaling says, this is lovely. <laughs> this is really great. And they don't fall asleep after lunch, for example, when they come back.